What's up guys? Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use the fillet and chamfer tools inside of Rhino in order to create smoother corners in your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video in particular, we're going to focus on using the fillet and chamfer tools on edges rather than surfaces. Um, the ones for surfaces are completely different tools and we can talk about those in the future. But for right now, what I want to do, and so I'm going to start off and I'm just going to chamfer the edge of uh, one of these objects right here so you can see how we would do that. So we're just going to type in chamfer edge. Make sure that you select the edge rather than the surface. But then what we're going to do is we're going to click on this edge right here. And there's a number of different um, options in here which we can talk about in a little bit. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and hit the inner key. And so notice how when I hit the inner key, I get, I get these little handles that I can adjust. We're not going to adjust them right now, but they're in here and you can use them to adjust the depth of this chamfer. But if I go ahead and hit the inner key, notice what that's going to do is that's going to take the edge between this point and this point, and it's basically going to shave it off. So we can do some interesting things with this. So first off, let's go ahead and run this again over here. So we're going to run the chamfer edge. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and select this edge. And so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the inner key, but this time, we want to go ahead, we want to adjust our chamfer distance, right? And so there's a few different things we could do with this. So one thing we could do is we could click and drag on one of these ends in order to set a different distance. So for example, if I wanted this to be like five feet, I could click and I didn't actually drag, I actually single clicked and moved my mouse. But then notice how I can adjust the other sides as well like this. So if I was to hit the inner key, notice what that's going to do is that's going to chamfer this off at a different distance over here than over here. All right, so in addition, you can also, when you do a chamfer edge, you can set the distance before you select the edge. So let's say I wanted this to be a deeper chamfer, but I didn't really want to mess around with the handles. I can just click on the value of next chamfer distance and type in a new value. So now the next thing that I click on is going to have a chamfer of five feet instead of one foot. So if I hit the enter key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna chamfer this edge across. And so one other thing you can do is you can also add additional handles. So let's say that we wanted to do a chamfer edge right here and um, we wanted to have less of a chamfer in the middle. If I hit the enter key and then click on the option for add handle, that's gonna allow me to add a new handle in the middle that I can then adjust. So, and you can add as many of those as you want. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the enter key, but notice how I can adjust this like this, so we can do kind of a variable chamfer. So something like this, where it kind of like tapers off around the edges. And so you can also select multiple edges at once. So for example, if I was to type in chamfer edge, and then come in here and click on the various edges like this, and then hit the enter key, that's gonna come in here and that's gonna chamfer off all of the selected edges. So if I hit the inner key, notice how it's gonna chamfer all of those. And I'm gonna go back in and do something with a little bit less depth. So I'm just gonna do a chamfer edge. We'll set our chamfer distance to one instead of five and then select this so you can see it a little bit clearer. But now if I hit the inner key, it's gonna chamfer all of those at one time like this. And so notice how this is also going to affect the way that corners come together. So if I do a chamfer edge right here and I select multiple edges coming into this corner, and hit the enter key. Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring those together and kind of combine them to kind of like chop the corner off. So you can use this in order to quickly um, chamfer off all of the edges in an object if you wanna do that. So one thing to note about this is that it is really important that your objects are joined together if you're going to use the chamfer edge function. So right now, for example, this doesn't even have a top. So if I was to try to run it, right? If I was trying to do a chamfer edge, notice how it's not even gonna let me select them. It won't let me select anything because these are all separate. So what I need to do is I need to take all of these so I'm just gonna select them all, and I need to join them into a singular object. However, right now we have a problem because there's no cap on top of this, right? So um, even if I was to try to run this, there's nothing for it to chamfer between. Now it can chamfer between these right here, but not at the top. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my surface tools, and I'm gonna use the option for surface from planar curves, and I'm just gonna select these edges right here, and hit the enter key, that's going to create a surface, but notice how that surface is separate from this object right here. So if I try to do this, right, it's not going to work. However, I can take these two and select them and type in join in order to join them into a single object. And then we can select the edges 
and chamfer them off. So now if I hit the enter key, notice how it's gonna come in here and it's going to combine all of these together. And if I hit enter, it's going to chamfer off the entire edge around this whole perimeter right here. So now let's talk a little bit about fillet. So we've been doing chamfer, which is just like a single cut in here. Well, there's an option in here called fillet. Yeah, and in this case, we want fillet edge. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna do the same thing as chamfer, but with a curve rather than a single cut. So if I run this right here, notice how this gives me a curve across this surface right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these over. We'll create a couple copies in here, but notice how the fillet function is going to allow us to set this by radius. So instead of having a one radius, maybe I could do a three radius, but we can just click and hit the enter key and you can see these control curves right here. So you can adjust the control curves in order to get different results, right? So I could have a deeper or a smaller one and it's gonna give me this curve surface right here. And so this is gonna work in generally the same way. So let's say for example, I'm gonna go ahead and create a copy of this as well. Let's say for example, I was to come in here and do a fillet edge and we were to select this edge, this edge, and this edge right here. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me more of a rounded corner on the corner right here. So you can use this to create kind of round corners that kind of come together in the center of an object. But again, we can select multiple different edges to run our fillet along, just like we did before. And in general, and notice how this gives you kind of an interesting result down at the bottom, um, but it kind of like automatically rounds all these together. But again, it's gonna work the same way as before where the objects all need to be joined together in order for this to work. So these, for example, we join them together. We would take these and do a join. And then you could fill at the edges along the top like this. And notice how you get this kind of like curved edge across the top. And now one thing I do want to point out, and I'm not going to get too far into the surfaces at the moment, but um, if you have two separate objects, right? So this object and this object, you can't currently fill at this edge or chamfer this edge in order to kind of merge these together or get like a smooth transition, right? So if I do like a fillet right here with a fillet edge and I click on this, what it's gonna do is it's going to remove material along the bottom, but there's no real like smooth transition here, right? You've got just like a, you've got a face right here and then you've got another object right here. However, if you were to use the surface function, so if we were to do a fillet SRF, instead of a fillet edge, I could select these two surfaces and it's going to actually create a fillet between the two surfaces to give us a smooth transition. So let's say we had an object like this one where these had all been exploded into various parts. Well, you could use the fillet surface or the chamfer surface. So fillet SRF in order to create a smooth transition between those surfaces like this. Now notice how because we didn't pick up the end that this doesn't give us that smooth edge transition. So you do need to be a little bit careful with that, but you can do a fillet SRF and then do a click and a click in order to create a transition between those surfaces, even though they're not in the same object. So leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions. I will link to some other Rhino tool tutorials on this page, but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.